So next, uh, yes, okay. So next uh, talk uh, is given by uh, Dr. Murugason, uh, Mary Pan from Jinti uh, at, uh, at Tohoku University in Japan. And uh, right now, uh, Murugasan, he, he is the research fellow uh, at the Tohoku University, and he has been working on this topic for many years. years. And today, his uh, presentation topic is Cup to Copper Direct Bonding Through Highly Oriented in Large uh, Copper Brands for Advanced 3D LSI Applications. Let's welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Maripa. Maripa. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Ah, thank you. Oh, uh, thank you, Chan. Oh, okay, this is um, irrigation. Actually, my talk basically how we can improve the copper grain in the copper copper direct bonding or in the I mean hybrid bonding. So basically, I will talk about how we can interruption. Well, this is the outline of my talk after giving brief introduction. Basically, I will talk about the before bonding, after bonding, this characterization of our modified copper fill for getting very good grain alignment and single grain copper interconnect between top and bottom chips. So this is some introductory slide. As you can see in this graph, this is the interconnect density and this is the uh, over the years. As you can see, there are two different regions. One is the green and another is the red. This basically red is for TSV and green is for micro bump or whatever you are interconnect, micro joint. And here, as you can see, on R&D level, we have been moved from, from few thousands to, we are closing to a million, if not a uh, hundred thousand. And, but in the, if you go for the production uh, excuse level. Me. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Still, you can't hear? Uh, murugan uh, are, yeah. are we in the slide three? Yeah, I'm in slide three. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. okay. So R and D level, okay, we 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 are able to, I mean, increase the interconnect density. But if you go for production level, you have to stick stack your dice. Here comes your TSV and micro joint problem. I mean, so in in the industry level, you, you can we closely we are in the uh, up to ten thousands of TSVs we can make it, but the Question is, if you go, when you are going to joint your, your top die and bottom die, obviously you are going to, your TSE is going to land on your bottom micro bump or copper die. So the size of the micro bump, that, that causes the real I mean, issue here. Although we have been able to move from I mean, several tens of micrometer bump pitch, I mean, this, here I'm talking about the bonding pitch to few micron pitch. But well, this is so far so good only when you are talking about only flip chip. But when you are going to stack your things, even though we are able to reduce our TSU size to few nano, I mean, few hundreds of nanometer or if not, I mean, couple of microns, but still your micro pump bonding pitch, it's still it's in somewhere between seven to 10 micrometer. So basically the bump size, it's, it limits the interconnect density in the 3D stack system. So how we are going to reduce our 3D interconnect, I mean, bonding pitch. So these are some of the micro bump bonding technologies uh, with, with, with bump and with um, bumpless, I mean, that is copper to copper direct or hybrid bonding. So this is the, some of the work which we have carried out in Tokyo University and we have, this what's shown here from the 10 micrometer copper tin, I mean, a typical one. And we were able to achieve this one even for a couple of micron to four to five micron pitch for indium copper micro bomb. Well, Sony has, I mean, five, six years back already shown that the, the TSV pitch itself is less than a couple of micron. But this is talking about only my, my TSV pitch. When you are going to do your bonding, the, again, it's you are going, you are facing only 14 micrometer or something. So basically, the question arises from the moment you are going to bond your stack die, the bonding pitch goes. I mean, we are not able to reduce much as much as we think, as or we have to. So 
And this is the four layer stack this we have been prepared in the Pook University. And this is using your tenant. Excuse Hello? me, Marukasan. Yeah? Uh, your slide is not moving. We all, uh, it's always stop at uh, slide number. So I was talking about these, some of the bump, micro bump and bump bonding technologies in our Pook University. And so we have, we have carried out some four layer stacking and other things. And recently we have worked on some less than 100 nanometer copper pillar, which, which is bonded to your copper pad. And this, these are the, some of the typical copper, copper direct and hybrid bonding. But the question is, how we can reduce the bonding pitch? So as I mentioned, when, when you are going to bond your top day and bottom day using TSV and micro bump, that basically the micro bump is creating your bonding with problem. So basically people are trying to do your hybrid bonding or here comes the copper couple hybrid bonding or the direct bonding. There you can go from your bonding pitch from 12 micron to even 1.5 micron based on this your copper copper hybrid bonding technology. So this this allows you to reduce your bonding pitch 10x. So today I will talk about how we can improve this copper copper bind, I mean hybrid bonding technology. So these are again some of the things. We, we, as you can see, the, the bottom one is some research group, and the top one is using the nano twin structure. Well, they have got very good. I mean, copper copper bonding. But what I would like to say is, you, you, you can see the, the colored, I mean, image. This is the bottom copper pad, or whatever colored other color is your copper um, micro pump. So if you carefully look, always you, you, you end up with some copper interface. Why, why? As you, what I would like to say is, as you can see, your copper bottom, uh, copper pad is having one copper grain orientation, whereas your top copper bump has different multi, I mean, polycrystalline. So none of the copper orientation matches with your bottom one. So th there's no copper diffusion at all. You, you may say that, oh, I got very good copper bonding, but I would say that there is no copper diffusion between your different oriented grain. It clearly shows here. Even though you got some very good, nice copper bonding and you were bonding strength 10 megapascal or 25 megapascal, in my view, you, you are copper grind between top and bottom shape, always disconnected. Uh, obviously, you may get some electrical connection, but if you talk about an atomical view, I, I would say there is no copper grind diffusion between either 1110 or 1111 plate. It, it's very difficult. So even if you go for your hybrid bonding against the same issue, you always see some seam. That is, your, your top and bottom copper grain never moves into each other. Even though here you see some, but it, this is again grain growth from your top one alone. So I, I'd like to say so far some typical plating chemistry, I mean, it's quite common nowadays. So whatever you use, where before bonding, whatever your copper film or your copper pad or whatever copper pump, always it is a multi, I mean, random oriented multi grain. So none, rarely some, some of your grains may match, but obviously it doesn't match your top and bottom grain. So the present study aim is how we can improve this one. I mean, here we want to improve, of course, our ultimate aim is to get some single grain copper between your top and bottom, but if not, at least even though if it is multi-grain, still we, we would like to create such kind of thing where your top and bottom copper grain is same, I mean aligned one and it just has single resistance over here. So how we can do this one? So basically we go for some different plating chemistry by which we are able to increase our copper grain as well as copper orientation. So these are some of the typical one, and basically the couple of director heavy bonding. While doing your preliminary bonding, it is a single way for processing. Whereas after doing to improve your copper diffusion or copper, I mean bonding strength, you have to go for annealing. This one you can do it by either single or you can go for batch processing. Of course, the temperature and time duration it depends upon your, I mean, different condition. 
tennis are you seeing now slide number 9 i just just cross checking 10 yes it's in slide number okay, 9 okay okay thanks so this is uh, some of the results so what is shown on the left is a plating chemistry it is a conventionally used one where you are of this is of the copper electroplating your grain size is somewhere between a couple of microns and again this is randomly oriented what is shown in the right is the our proposed new plating chemistry where you we were able to improve your copper grain to minimum 10 micron to it, it, it runs from 10 to 20 microns so in, a, in addition to that we are able to align our copper grain also so we, we, we would like to use this kind of copper i mean your film or pad or whatever it may be to use it for your copper copper bonding or that whether we were able to get very nice single grain bonding between your top and bottom chip before going to our, our copper copper direct bonding i would like to show some of the physical parameter or mechanical property of this film because after doing electroplating obviously before going for bonding we have to do copper cmp for that our new film has to stand so we check our hardness and ductile ability of our film this is the tensile test on our film so what is soon right i mean left is a normal one and right is our new one as you can see, the conventionally used one is which has a very tiny, I mean, copper grains, uh, which is oriented in different orientation. But the thing is, it is quite hard because it 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 it, it oriented in different direction. And it's obviously the you are when you are reducing your size to your nano level, obviously the hardness increases as compared to your bulk. So we we observed a peak load of 18 kilogram force. On the other hand, for the new one, we observe nearly one third, just six kilogram force. It's it's quite, I mean, malleable, ductile. It's the Young's modulus may be very low. In addition to that, we we did up, if you carefully look on this before going to break point here, your conventional one is just your curvature one. On the other hand, in our new chem, using our new chemistry, the plated grains are always showing some slip-like behavior. So it basically it occurs between normally some two dimensional material or some oriented material. So it just, your planes are slippy. So basically it, it confirms our grains are aligned somewhere in some direction. And this is our hardness test. As I said in the tensile data, this hardness test also supports our new chemistry copper film as very low hardness as nearly half of your conventional one. So this will help when you do your copper copper direct on your hybrid bonding to deform your copper to get into move into other directions so that you get very intimate contact between top and bottom copper. So these properties are very important. And to confirm our grain alignment, we also did some XRD things. And as you can see, the red one is for conventional one and the green one is for your, our new plating chemistry. As, and I just plotted the relative intensity, as you can see, for the, our new one, the 200, that is a, a oriented film, or if not, I mean, AB oriented film. That, that films are formed in, 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 in X-ray plane. So this fraction is large. So this, this, this confirms both our tensile and hardness data also. That's why we get very low, I mean, peak load and slip-like and slip -like behavior. So these things, how it will work for our couple copper direct or hybrid bonding. So these are some of the things, I mean, it's just a trivial thing. So basically we did our couple copper direct bonding after playing load at 400 degrees Celsius and annealed for two hours. And this is the typical one. And we did check the copper copper bonding strength one is using your blade dicing another one is the shear test and the after copper copper direct bonding we dice the wafer into 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter dice and you can see none of the chips are just um, flown away of course you may say here uh, our copper film right i mean during the electroplating itself we do not have any copper here so obviously it won't stick to this so other than that, we, 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 our, I mean, 
copper copper the new plating chemistry yields very good bonding strength it 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 withstands your conventional blade dies and this is the we took some of the chips and did shear test as you can see the maximum bonding strength we found for this uh, what that uh, red uh, black one black one is for new chemistry and the red one is for conventional one we did observe a quite close i mean bonding strength if not i mean little bit higher value so it shows that our bonding strength is also good it, if, if if not very good it's i com comparable to a conventional one. but our ultimate aim is how we are going to improve our copper grain structure between top and bottom tie that comes here so what is shown here is oh sorry oh no so the left side is the after couple couple bonding this is for conventional plating chemistry and the right side is for our new one as you can see the left side obviously you you will see always uh, i mean top i'm um, a bonding interface and also the grain size are different oriented obviously because it's, it's, it's not at all aligned one before bonding itself so there is hardly any bonding between i mean copper diffusion or grain growth a single grain growth between top and bottom tie on the other if you look at the your right side this is our new plating chemistry as you can see as as i saw our copper grain from xrd structure it is either 100 or 110 oriented so obviously you, you see a very nice single grain between your bottom die and top die connecting single copper grain so that that's what our aim so this basically this this kind of single grain is very very important when you move on to i mean less than a micron size your copper copper on micro joint or other thing we have to have a single grain to reduce the i mean your joint resistance so we were finally able to achieve this kind of things using our modified electroplating chemistry so with this i would like to conclude my talk and we were proposed for how to form a single grain cup interconnect based on this we just our modified electroplating chemistry we were able to form nice single grain copper between the top and bottom die and the our result shows that the our grains are really oriented and also the low i mean hardness value it, it helps to form very nice i mean single joint between your top and bottom die it, i would like to thank uh, mr mori for doing all this copper copper direct bonding experiments and i'm glad to have any questions if you have thanks Okay, thank you very much. Okay, it's very interesting. So now we are open uh, for the questions. Any questions? Uh, feel free to uh, type the questions in the chat box. Okay, I do have some questions for you. And uh, <laughs> the first, yes. Okay, so the first, the first thing is, uh, so you mean that uh, you want to have the single or line. the same uh, grain orientations for the top and the bottom and to do the bonding right yes yes and uh, is there any specialty or any uh, any requirement for the grain orientation such as 111 110 um, or 100 i think if you go for 111 obviously the grain i mean mechanical property will be very very nice and no doubt but the question is the moment you are going to 111 your grains may not align always 111 because the grain size is very smaller when you go for 111 if uh, unless otherwise you prepare 111 epitaxial film that's a different story but during your electroplating you will never get epitaxial film always polycrystalline random oriented one Okay, so what you mean is you prefer the larger grain or even yes, the exactly. grain is better, exactly. right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so uh, I got one question: is what is the major difference between the plating chemistry A and B? I'm 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 extremely extremely sorry. This uh, as as I as you, I forgot to mention in the very first slide. This work is it is a collaborative work with some company JCU Corporation. It, that's our their patent one. I I can't reveal anything regarding plating chemistry. I'm 
I'm so sorry. Okay, and uh, so another question here. So, uh, uh, what is the bonding temperature? I mean, like uh, this slide. Yeah, bonding temperature is for both 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 samples are prepared at four hundred degrees C for two two hours. I see. Same, I see. same so ideal Okay, so it's a near to the four hundred degrees C, right? Yes. Okay, I see. Okay, so I think. Uh, okay, do you have any EBSD data? Uh, here after I take. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not here. Okay. So what was the pressure and the temperature uh, well, which produced the chemistry B in, in, in this one? Yes. I the, mean, pressure means loading pressure during bonding? Yeah, the bonding pressure and the temperature. And the temperature bonding. you just answered, right? And uh, yeah. do you have any bond pressure or is bonding, bonding at the, the atmosphere or? At atmosphere, I would say it's a reduced atmosphere. Okay. Some of the things I can't reveal. The atmosphere is reducing atmosphere during bonding. During bonding, not annealing, during bonding. Okay. And the pressure is somewhere close to, I mean, for the 8 inch wafer, it's close to, say, 10,000 Newton. Okay, I see. Thank you. Well, you are welcome. Okay, so. If no further questions, and uh, I would like to thank the uh, the presenter here again, and uh, I also would like uh, since we already completed the uh, keynote and two talks, so I would like also to conclude uh, today's uh, today's um, the evening session, and hope to see you. Look forward to see you uh, tomorrow morning or uh, this evening. Thank you very much, and uh, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay. okay.